right, so I'm going to show you the E shape of the C major scale. So the cage system, basically the whole idea is that there's five chord shapes that can cover the whole neck of the guitar for all the scales and arpeggios and understanding kind of where everything goes, which is really helpful. So the C shape, the A chord shape, the G chord shape, the E chord shape, and a D chord shape. And if you play all five of them and move them up, you can get um, every position to cover all the scales all over the neck. So I've already done the C shape in the first position and all the notes that cover the first four frets. Then not the C shape, but the A shape is the next one that we did. That's on the fifth fret. So if you were to have a capo on the third fret and then play an A chord at the fifth fret, you would end up having the C shape in that position covering those four frets. Then there is a G chord shape. And if we raise it all the way up to fret eight, capo fret five, you have a C chord. Although it looks like a G shape to us guitar players. So the next shape is an E chord shape. And if we raise that up all the way until we reach fret nine and 10, little E chord but brought up and if we had a capo clamping down fret 8 then that would be a C chord although as guitar players we can think of it as E the E shape so if you look in here you can see those notes so fret 10 is the G on the A string fret C is fret is fret 10 and then the string below it is fret E on fret nine. And then if you had this capo clamp across the eighth fret, or a bar chord with an E shape, it was C chord. And then we can build the scale around that. So we can find the letters, we can find the interval numbers, like numbering the scale, the finger numbers to tell us maybe which fingers could work really well to place there, and then the solfege. So let's start by jumping into the finger numbers here. I'm gonna zoom in. So as you can tell, this is covering what we call the seventh position. So our four fingers will spider across from the seventh fret. You'll often have a little dot on the seventh fret there. And if your fingers were to go one fret at a time, fingers one, two, three, four, they would be spread across the seventh fret. We're gonna catch all the notes in the C major scale right there. So fret seven is the first finger on the big string. Fret two is the eighth fret. Finger four, I think I said the wrong word. <laughs> um, one more time, big string, finger one, fret seven. Fret two on the big string. Fret four, I'm still saying the wrong word. I'm gonna leave my mistakes in here. Where our, um, I'm putting out a lot of new content, so this is just like a rough overview, and then things are gonna be broken down into small little practice segments. Um, but I wanted to get the concept out here, and uh, subscribe and watch out for, for some of the new broke down um, segments here to practice along with. Or reach out, send me a message for an email, and I can show you some tricks on how to break this down and practice it with good repetition and, and good practice plans. So, big string, fret seven. That's finger one. Fret eight, that's finger two. Fret four, finger four. Still saying the wrong thing. Fret 10, string below it. Fret seven's finger one. Fret eight, finger two. Fret 10, finger four. String below that, finger one, finger three on fret nine, finger four on fret 10. Now we're on string G, the third string of the guitar. Finger one, finger three, and finger four. The next string doesn't have a finger that gets played because it's not in the key of C. But we go to finger two on fret eight, finger four, then the small string, finger one, finger two, and finger four. Good practice would be to go in segments, go up and down and random randomize it, like do things at like five reps each. It'll start to build this memory in your mind and the, the muscle memory in your, 
in your hands the the familiarity of going there through through some experience of, of rep repeating things. So let's do the same thing, but this time we'll call the notes by their names. So if you start on fret seven here, that's the B note on the big string. So we could say B fret eight, C fret ten, D next string over. Fret seven is E. Fret eight is F. Fret ten is G. Fret seven is A. Fret nine is B. Fret ten is C. Next string. Fret seven D. E. F. Next string. G. A. Small string. B. C. And D. Again, this is a quick overview. The blue notes are going to be the notes that are resolved and in harmony and in the chord of C. The green ones are two frets away from a chord, the blue notes, and they tend to sound kind of colorful and pretty. Um, the B and F note, those ones are always one fret away from a blue note, a note that's in the chord, and they sound really tense. So when you play them, you can, but they're going to be one of the more tense sounds because they're one fret away from a blue chord, blue chord note. So the next thing we can do is we can say the numbers, what we call intervals, on this fretboard chart. So the interval is like the number of the scale. So the first number of the scale right here, that's our C note. And if we went back, we'd have the seventh number of the scale, seventh note in the scale. So we'll say the seventh note, the first note. So these aren't the fingers, these aren't the frets. We're thinking of lots of different things here. So intervals. This is the second note of the scale, the third note of the scale, fourth note of the scale, fifth note of the scale, sixth note, seventh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two. And the significance of this is if you play a chord and someone has a name of a chord, like to play a five chord, a four chord, like a C5 or a C4 or a C7 or a C6, you can find all the numbers from this scale um, when they're intervaled or made with numbers of the interval numbers of the scale, right? So like if I were to play a C chord and I were to put in a, a second interval, I'd put in that number two to my C chord and then I have a C add two. If I put in a a C chord with, say, this fourth note. That would be a C with a four, or we call C sus four. So knowing these intervals can be really helpful. Whenever we play just blue notes, it tends to sound very resolved and kind of finished. So then the final thing to do is we could say, learn these, these notes and their names from the solfege. There's a lot of use for, for knowing them with that sort of langu musical language. So the first note of the scale is on fret eight there. That note's called Do. Do, and we could sing it and play it. Do, then Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, T, Do, and Re. So again, this isn't really a great video necessarily for practicing. It's just an overview of showing you where the notes are. Um, what we just did is each thing once. That would be like going to the football field and throwing the ball once, and that's your practice for the day. Doesn't really help you memorize something. What you want to do is break it into segments, break it into strings, break it into you know a group of strings, um, and then repeat it like five times, go in the same direction five times, go backwards five times. Um, maybe play a game where you just play blue notes or just orange notes or just green notes. Um, you could jam along to a backing track or, or a friend that can play the chord so you can hear the harmony of whether they're tense or not tense. If they're blue, they're in with the C chord. If they're green, they're colorful. They're the, we call the, the twos or the, 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 
nines or the sixes or the thirteens of a chord, or the rays or the las, um, which happen to be the letters in this key of, what are they again? Ds and As. So the blue ones, one, three, five interval, do, mi, so, solfege, C, E, G notes. It's the note of a C chord, C triad. The greens, these are the pretty or the consonant colors. You could have a chord that's an add two, add nine, six or 13, add in the D or A note. Anything that's really tense is gonna be the B or the F. Now I didn't label those, but a B is like a seventh and an F would be a fourth. Or I guess if you go above that, you could call it an 11th sometime. So that helps with chord naming and understanding just kind of the mood or the vibe that, that each color can, can provide. So this is kind of like a common categorization if the orange notes are one fret away, they're tense. If the green notes are two frets away from a chord, it's kind of pretty and consonant, and colorful, like a pentatonic scale. The blue notes, they tend to be quite um, resolved when you play it against a C major chord. So if we start to think of the keys in these colors, it can be a lot easier to categorize than just, and you can see patterns within it, right? You can see the word bead you can see B and F making a straight line. You can see an E chord shape in there. The A's and D's tend to be beside each other. There's just different ways to start seeing the fretboard, um, seeing patterns within it. And um, it's really musically applicable because you often wanna know when you're in or out of harmony. And if you color code it like this and start knowing where you are, through fun games or through jamming and improvising or even just kind of exercises, singing up and down, then it starts to make it really familiar and then you're really comfortable with it. Like learning a language, you can write songs, you can improvise so much uh, with so much more confidence because you kind of know when you're in or out of harmony uh, and you know where the notes are. You can find those in and out of harmonies all over the fretboard. So we start with the C shape position, the A shape position, the G shape position, the E shape, and that spelt the word caged. And uh, it's quite a cool little system. When I first learned it, it totally opened things up for me with, with guitar, being able to, to find notes that fit um, using my ear, but also using uh, a little bit of theoretical knowledge, which got a lot more applicable through making exercises and fretboard charts and jamming along with them like this. Um, but it's kind of hard to do all on your own. So if, if you're finding this challenging or if you want some tips on how to break this down, send me an email and I'm happy to uh, book in a, a lesson with you. I've got a few spots right now, but they're going fast. Um, yeah, send me a message. Thanks guys, have fun. Like, sh share, subscribe, share with your friends. Um, every, every little bit, helps to, to get this out there and then I can condense down to even more content and show you guys more how you can really break this down and practice it and apply it to your own own playing. Uh, I've got lots of fun games and ways of tips on, on making music. So thanks. Again, I'm Lance from Make Music Here and Lava Guitar Lessons. Have fun.